What's up guys, Gary here for Jam VFX. Welcome back to a new tutorial. Today we're talking about UDIMs. Um, UDIMs are, it stands for U Dimension. And it was really begun back in the days of Lord of the Rings at Weta when they were trying to find ways to sort out how to have better quality texture maps for objects. So for example, rather than try and cram everything into a 4K tile, what they did instead was have multiple 2K tiles. So one tile would be for, say, an arm, another one would be for a leg, and then there'd be another one for another, the other arm, and then for the other leg, and so on. And having these number of texture maps identified in the U dimension, so one would be in one tile space, and then one in the next tile space, and one in the next tile space, meant that you could actually place the texture placement, the UV placement of your object, somewhere else along the grid, and then it would pick it up that there'll be a texture for this particular section. And that's basically what UDIMs are. They're multiple textures on one object. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to open something that I've been working on. And it's, don't panic. Um, it's, I'm making a copy, my own stylized copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And as you can see here, uh, the main body of this object, let me just put that, those bits on. The main body of this object has got uh, some dirt stuff going on here, and it's also got, you can't quite tell in Eevee, I don't think. Oh, let me just turn that off, maybe you can. It's got some there, it's got some fingerprints, um, uh, which are basically in the roughness and the specular. And you can see it particularly well on this glass just there. Okay, now you might also notice that if I'm in nice and close here, the pixels on this look a little bit rough. But if I move across to here, the pixels on what is happening here, now this is all one object, don't forget, are actually still in pretty good nick. And the reason that they are in such good nick is because the elements here are on one separate panel next to the one that holds all the elements that take up for the rest of the object. So if I'll show you what I mean, if I go to the UV editing here, and because we've got this object selected at the moment, the actual main book body, you can see here, and because we have two UDIM tiles, you can't really see the numbers, but just in the corner overlay, you've got 1001, which is the first UV tile, uh, and 1002, and that's the second UV tile. They basically come in blocks like this, and you can have 10 in a row before you have to go up to the next row. So you can have 1001 to 1010. And then you go up a row and it goes 1, 0, 11 to 1, 0, 20 and so on. You can keep going up for quite a while. But this is basically how you actually place your textures in there. And in order for it to activate, you need to basically uh, pull your polygons into the next tile, which is a very, very simple way uh, mathematically because of just the way Blender works in terms of if you want to move something a full numerical value in one axis, it, you can just do it. Um, so at the moment, both of those, as you can see, are literally right there in the UV place on one and two. Obviously, we can make those more visibly just by going up and affecting. But the point is you can keep on stacking and pulling away. And we're going to do this in a little while. Um, if I go back here to the shading menu, um, you can see here's there you go. That's some of my that's one of my specular maps for the front and the back of the phone. So this is the one for the front bit here. And this is one for the back bit here. So if we go back to the UV, you can see what I mean. Here's all of the phone. And then here's just the two screens, which is why you're able to have, um, I could have you know, a 2K map for all that and that's fine. And then a 2K map or a 4K map for here. So if we were going really close here, we were zooming in and then doing a camera move, we got to the screen, we could have a really high quality animation going on on that screen, which is great. And that's the idea. So we'll go back to our shading, as I said, and you'll notice that we've actually got, obviously there's other stuff here. You know, there's other elements going on here, um, particularly these buttons. Now the buttons are all basically in one big bank. They will eventually be split up into individual objects. But then part of me says, you know, I could do all of the pushes down with shape keys if I have it still as one object. So if I have it still as one object, I've got one shader. So how am I going to go about putting a different letter on each of these blocks? Well, I happen to have, um, <laughs> I happen to have a, a series of 29, I think it is, uh, textures with letters on and a few symbols and stuff. 
and these are going to sit on these objects on these tiles so if i go back to the uv editing you will see here that we still got 101 and 102 available here uh, that's because we are looking as i say at a udim up here it also kind of like this there's there's menu stuff that you can get access to under here uh, for showing you know, if, you know, if, you know whether you want the grid on or not or you want it over the image um, rather under the image like it is there and then you've got the stretch that's just for your textural stuff so you have an area or angle if you've got an angle you generally get a nice color um, uh, and then of course you can change the style of your uh, UVs by changing it say for example to dashed a dashed line or a black line or you can change that to uh, a white line you know just so when it's not selected you can see that they are the UV dots I'm gonna leave that in fact um, sorry with uh, the outline because I prefer it and as you can see here I if I swipe over this you see it selects every single one of those buttons because all of the UVs basically I made one button and did an array of four in one direction and then an array of seven in the other direction which is why we've got four sevens which are 28 buttons I think that's right one two one two three four five six seven yeah four four sevens are 28 that's right so I've got 28 tiles um, but what we need to do is we need to move these out or so they're all sitting in that one I can't give them texture maps where it picks a texture map based on where the textural udim stuff is until I move them into the right place so let's just quickly do that to the best of our endeavor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick uh, I'm going to change this to polygon mode I'm going to put the cursor over this one here I'm going to press L and that selects this now we need to move this exactly one unit across in the X well how do we do that well the best way to do it is to go GX1 and that moves it all to there we can then do that go on to the next one and do that and now that's selected here we can go GX2 so that moves that into there and then here again we can just keep on doing this Oops, to select that's it and that would be GX4 no uh, GX minus one to put it in the three block that's uh, all right and we got it there we got it uh, 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 oh well i think something's gone wrong i appear to have that's where you ah there we go right so gx3 and go here <clears throat> linear oops linear a uh, linear l sorry did i have been saying linear for that i've got linear on the mind uh gx4 I did it in the wrong window that's the problem there so let's do it over here sorry gx4 mind you don't do that that's a silly thing to do um, let's just keep this here i can increase the number of udims in fact i will do that now because we are working in a udimish kind of place i'm going to increase the tiles here in the x to 10 it won't go any further and i'll push that up now i'll leave that on three so you can see what's going on so we've got here let's go L. that's one two three four five good let's go to our sixth G -S If I just go L, also L, 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 that's right. L, 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 good just to check. There you go. And let's go L, 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 L. There you go. So I've got all those now in different UDIMs now at the moment. We still have only two UDIM block numbers being visible in there. If I just zoom in so we can see them, you still can't probably see them. They're really, really tiny, but they're in there. And this is where I'm going to very, very quickly save this file because I don't know whether it's going to do it again, but it has been known to go, how many? No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. So let's go into our shading menu. And this is the first question really I always find is, how? How do I put UDIMs on this thing? 
How do, how do I do it? Well, there's no image that says, or a node that says uh, you need to use UDIMS. But you, there's just one called, well, go to texture, you've got all of this stuff. And you're not using an image sequence. It is a sequence of images, but an image sequence is an animation. But go down to image texture here. I'm going to drop this in here. And if I go open image, I'm going to go up here into my textures folder. These are the ones that are on our phone. And you'll let in fact, if I just, if I can't go any bigger with this, can I? Um, you'll notice that and here I've got like the file name, then under, underneath I've got specular. And I've got dot one zero zero one dot PNG. And over here I've got the same name right to specular to the dot and I've got 1002.png. Now, basically, what that 1001, if that's in that file, it recognizes that it's a UDIM. It's an image file, but it's not an image sequence. It's an image, so if there's one of them, it's then going to say, hang on, are there any more? And it will look, and it'll find the next one of the sequence and appreciate that it's a UDIM. Now, that is really, really useful because especially when you've got this mess of buttons. <laughs> so I've got one here, button 1001. I'm picking just that one and straight away it just goes, ah, I've got a sequence and it puts in that word. There you go, look, you can see it now. Udim, it just says, right, okay. So now if I put that onto the base color, if I put this to the base color here, Suddenly, all our buttons have letters. And we also have a dot and a comma, because why not? Straight away, there you go. They are visible as letters on our panel, which is great, because that's exactly what we need to do. But the best thing about this is, of course, you can use this for multiple things. For example, we're lucky enough to have that being mostly white and black. It's actually a pale yellow and black so it feels like it's a little bit dated almost almost like um, the sort of stuff that you'd imagine if you were in loki's world i suppose uh, a lot of that stuff like that so what we can do is we can then go add a converter on this in fact we can do it no don't i shouldn't need a converter uh, i'm just going to add a, a vector bump here i'm going to take the color out of this and stick this into the height and stick the normal of this down here into our normal here And there you go. You can just see it's cut them in and there's a little bit of dirt on all of the letters, which is kind of standing up proud of it a little bit, like a little bit of a mark. So that's worked okay. That's good, that's good. Uh, but our buttons aren't very shiny. Uh, it would be nice if the white was shiny and the black wasn't. No, let's say the black is shiny and the white isn't. So let's know if we increase the roughness that's where we get most of our shine for the roughness. So I want a shine that's black and uh, maybe I want a little bit of shine going on here. We're getting more marking here now. So let's do the same thing again. Let's add, go to converter. Let's add a color amp, stick that in there. And let's get the color output of this and into the factor and then take the color of this and shove this into the roughness. And straight away, right away, if we just look here, uh, now on the bottom of this T, you see, we, because of this being black, the black that we've already got going into the black, that's made that sort of really sort of like make it nice and shiny there. But we've got nothing, we've got nothing in the on the on the paler color now. So let's scoot across to color two, color one, sorry, and we'll bring this down a little. So we're getting a bit more light in here. You can see it across more of those. Um, that's that's quite nice. Let's leave that like that. And also, I'm going to go back to my bump, and I'm going to adjust that height because it's too strong. Uh, point two. Uh, point two is better. It feels still feels a little bit broken up and stuff. But there you go. It's it's literally as simple as that. As simple as that. So like my red buttons, uh, there. I think they're still no no they're they're not they're, they've uh, they've also. They could probably do with some stuff as well, couldn't they? So I can go into my UV editing and I can select all of these here and go, if I go L and L and L, you can see they're all in the same place. Problem is they actually need to be re-UV'd because they were built out for stretch versions of those buttons. But that's simple enough for me to do. 
um, at a later stage if I just go L here and then I go GX1 there you go and then I go L here and I go GX2 now they've straight away gone into the other UDIMs UDIMs are absolutely fabulous and also I can if I want to I can go in and, and texture these off or add some more dirt or detail and stuff to them it's it's not a problem it's not a problem it's just not a problem anymore and I get exactly what I want there you go I can look at that all my filthy little textures that sounds a bit wrong um, but uh, yeah so if I go to my shading let's have a look there we go look at that happy happy Gary lovely don't panic don't panic and I can render this out and I'll stick it at the front of the actual uh, tutorial I'm talking about UDIMs and stuff I'm quite pleased with that. It's probably one of the nice things I've done for one of these tutorials in a while. And I'm going to endeavour to make sure that I do do better stuff because it does make a difference, uh, particularly uh, in the little icon at the front. Listen, guys, take care of yourselves. Uh, I will speak to you all soon and uh, have fun. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Oh, and the Grafters podcast is coming back. We're and I are currently working on uh, setting up a lot of stuff for season two. And... Um, it's going to be a lot more guests, guys. Lots and lots more guests. Listen, take care of yourselves, and I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye. Bye.